Ubisoft raises the white flag and the world rejoices. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. They're taking the company off the public market, going to put it into private hands. But should we be celebrating? Well, today it was announced that Tencent and the Guillemot family, I cannot say that word, sorry, I'm bad with names, have been talking about taking the company private again, where basically they buy out all the shares and the company will now no longer be at the behest of shareholders, just two, that would be Tencent and Guillemot family. I cannot say that word. The question that I have, is this actually a good thing? You see, Tencent, if you know anything about them, have such a massive stake in the market of gaming all over the world, whether it be in China or whether it be in the rest of the Western world. I kind of wonder to myself, is that eliminating competition? Because if you know anything, if the person who owns a majority stake in your company tells you to do something or they'll pull their money out and your company kind of relies on that money, you tend to want to do those things. This is one of the things that kind of worries me when it comes to talking about something like this, when it comes to market control. You see, we've heard from a bunch of people uh, that competition in the gaming world is good. We need competition. That's why when Sony feels comfortable with what they're doing, they tend to release very bad things. And that's why everybody should want Microsoft and Xbox to be doing well, and they want should want Nintendo to do well. And I mean, if we can revive Sega to its former glory, we should want them to do well as well because competition breeds creativity. But in this state, when you look at the absolute amount of companies that Tencent is involved in, those that they own minor stakes in, majority stakes in, you start to go, huh, it's kind of looking like there's not a whole lot of competition here, is there? It's kind of looking like this company has a lot of money in a lot of different places and has control over a lot of different IPs. I mean, Epic, Riot, so many more. It's absolutely insane. I'll put the little scroll up here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So my question is, yes, if Ubi Ubisoft obviously needed a check and a balance somewhere, and the question is, is this the one? Well, if you go and you look at what Tencent does in their own games and stuff like that, monetization is out the wazoo. And this is also the company that figured out how to monetize the microtransactions the best that anybody has ever seen. There's actually a great uh, YouTube documentary you can watch. It's on a channel called Magnates Media. Okay, M-A-G-N-A-T-E-S, Media. They're fantastic, Magnates Media. He breaks down the Tencent uh, company history very, very well. And that's one of the things that we should be very, very worried about is that Tencent comes in and they make monetization fun for you and me. So that way we can separate our dollars just more easily. I, wow, that rhymed. Holy crap. Hey, I'm a poet. Don't you know it? And that should be something that's very worrisome to everybody when it comes to anything at Ubisoft in the future. One of the other things that I really couldn't stand seeing today is I saw a take from Grums over on Twitter and he goes, are you tired of winning yet? And something like that, probably paraphrasing. I'll put the tweet up right here. And I said, yeah, celebrating the fact that a Chinese company is going to get ownership over another Western studio should not be cause for celebration. I said, that's very short-sighted and well, it's a retarded take. And to be perfectly honest, I still believe that today. You see, if you know anything about Tencent, the, the games that they promote and the money that they put out into the Western world, very different than what they promote in the borders of China. Now, if you know anything about China, in China, they basically block anything that looks like a DEI or pretty much ESG inside their borders, but they are the number one funder of it throughout the rest of the world, sinking a staggering 4.5 trillion dollars in 2023 into ESG DEI initiatives across so many Western companies. You see, it's really funny that they block it in their borders, but they promote it abroad. It's almost like a lot of people kind of understand this is not a good thing. It's going to tank businesses. And if China wants to be on the winning side, they're going to fund what they think they should in their own borders and then fund what they think they shouldn't abroad for the winning strategy, kind of making the bullets and band-aids type situation. It's an absolutely insane situation. And when you start looking into it and you're celebrating the fact that Ubisoft is going down, 
I kind of think, yeah, if you're making stupid decisions, absolutely celebrate that. But should we be celebrating who could potentially own Ubisoft in the future? And this is something that I think a lot of people are not paying enough attention to. Now, I did see some people going, ah, no, we, we shouldn't be. There were enough sensible takes like, ah, maybe we should uh, rethink this. Uh, uh, you know, maybe we, you know, maybe maybe we shouldn't just let Tencent buy the world's companies and have them under the Tencent brand. The other thing that a lot of people don't seem to understand about this entire situation is what it means for the gaming world, how it's changing and shaping what's going on in the Western world. Well, when you have a company that has this much money and this much power and is backed by the Chinese government and works hand in hand with them. It very much looks like it's kind of it, 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 it's kind of psychological warfare. I'm sorry to say it, and I know there's a lot of doom and gloom for a gaming video, but I can't exactly back the idea of this company getting yet another Western game developer. Obviously, Ubisoft made a lot of bad decisions with a lot of games. They had, what, six or seven games this year that came out? Something like that. Just working on way too many things. They're an overbloated studio. They have way too many people on the payroll. I saw a rumor that they're considering cutting 40% of their staff for the buyout, which is absolutely insane. So a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs on this one. And that kind of, that's not necessarily a good thing. So with all of this coming to a head and Ubisoft, you know, announcing that they're probably going to go private, they're pushing things back, they pushed pushed uh uh i want to keep saying ghost of yotake but it, no uh assassin's creed shadows sorry <laughs> that's right the other samurai game <laughs> assassin's creed shadow black back to uh february which is funny enough black history month and i think there's a marketing tactic that they're going to play there but pushing it back to february is one of those things that is just interesting to see how all these pieces are falling I think people are celebrating early. You know, I see people keep saying, oh, look at Eastern versus Western studios. You know, the Eastern studios are pushing out games that are doing very well, while the Western studios are pushing out all this woke garbage. And the funny thing is, Tencent has a stake in all of them. And it's funny that the amount of money that they're pushing out into the market, they're pushing out money into the market over in the East. And the East seems to be leaving out a lot of the modern political choices, whereas the West is pushing for them. And this is not something that I'm comfortable with. Again, this is something that you just start to dig and you start to peel back the layers of it. And you go, what's really going on here? Should we be celebrating yet the fall of another Western studio, the firing of more Western workers, right? The fact that China is now going to own another Western studio. This is worrying. This is something that I don't know that we should be celebrating. Yeah, people make a bad product, celebrate when they go out of business. I totally agree. But when all of a sudden we're playing on a scale that's much bigger than just a singular game company, and it starts to get in to other countries, other governments, governments that don't necessarily like us and we don't necessarily like them and we're all trying to play these shadow games against each other i don't know it's just something to think about and i don't think a lot of people understand everything that's going behind all of this and again maybe i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong maybe this does turn ubisoft around maybe it makes them even worse right yet sinking another company in the west while trying to strengthen china in their borders a lot of people think that I'm crazy for this, but when you start following the money, money talks. What's the old saying? Money talks and BS walks. Well, right now there's a lot of money changing hands. And when you look at where that money is going to and coming from and where it's succeeding and where it's failing and what's being pushed in certain regions of the world and what's being pushed in other regions of the world. I don't know. It's a lot to think about and it's a lot to take in and it's a lot of information to just process in and of itself. And unless you've been looking into something like this for years, you may not even know that this is happening. Unless you've seen the YouTube documentaries that have gone on about the company, unless you really know what's been pushed with Tencent in the past by the CCP. I don't know, it gets really interesting and it gets really hard to understand. Again, this is years and years of looking into stuff and trying to distill it into a 10 minute video. 
be perfectly honest, I probably didn't do it to the best of anybody's ability, but I think we need to talk about this when it comes to who is buying our companies in the West and what their motivations might be. That's the biggest point here. Thank you all so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. I do appreciate all of you. I appreciate the almost 180 subscribers that decided to click that button this last month. You guys are absolutely fantastic. I didn't even ask you guys to do it. You just did it. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much for being here on A Drink With Crazy. Let me know what you guys think about this topic. I definitely had it planned out differently in my head. I think I got lost in the weeds a little bit there. My apologies for that. I will do my best to make sure that my next video is a little bit more concise. But to be perfectly honest, I think you guys might get the idea. So, as always, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, cheers, everybody.